On this, the anniversary of the United States Marine Corps, I wish to make a pledge to the nation, a pledge based upon the great tradition which has grown and flourished with never faltering force throughout the 167 years of Marine Corps service to the flag. In the course of our long and illustrious history, we Marines have observed many of our birthdays in time of war. The Marine Corps was born November 10th, 1775, in the midst of America's fight for independence. From its very inception, the Corps abided by the first rule of free men, free choice of action. In those days, it was not a rare practice for naval captains of many nations to obtain seamen by means of the press gang. Men of all ages, sizes, dispositions, and nationalities were ambushed in waterfront saloons and forced into the service. But Captain Samuel Nicholas, the first Marine commanding officer, would consider no such methods. There must be a spirit among the men who fought with him, and that spirit, he knew, must arise from the hearts of free men who wanted to fight together for a great and common cause. He would gather those about him who volunteered for the task, or he would not gather at all. Thus it was that Captain Nicholas, in the days of the press gang, not only set up recruiting stations, but even went so far as to stipulate that no candidates would be accepted but those, as he put it, of dependable and religious nature combined with proper robustness of body. Such men, then as now, were not difficult to find. The standard has not changed, nor has American manhood. Those first Marines proved the soundness of the captain's evaluation of spirit in the Corps they were first to invade foreign soil, landing in the Bahamas to capture Fort Montague and Nassau. They led the way with Washington in the crucial battles of New Jersey. At sea, they became the terror of the Atlantic, aboard the ships commanded by John Paul Jones, father of the American Navy. Never once did they falter, never once did they fail. With these actions and many more, Marines wrought from their blood and steel a tradition that could never die. This tradition has been vital to the American people and the American way of life for 167 years. It is more vital to each one of us today than it has ever been before. Through the years, every man in every generation of Marines has determined to prove himself worthy of his traditional heritage. Every man has known the marine flame of invincibility must not flicker in his hands. He is pledged that he shall not fail, and he has kept his pledge. He kept his pledge at Tripoli in 1805. He kept his pledge with General Jackson at New Orleans, with Perry in Japan, with Dewey at Manila. He kept his pledge at Guantanamo Bay, and he kept it on the scarred battlefields of France in 1917 and 18. Now we are engaged in the greatest conflict of all time. The task that falls upon us overshadows all others in the history of our nation. By the fruits of our labor in this task, we shall live or die, but we shall live for we are not new hands at the grim game of fighting for existence. We have fought and we have won before. We emerge from each struggle with greater strength and greater freedom than we had before. We Americans possess a priceless heritage of victory. To the men of the United States Marine Corps, I say, I have not the slightest doubt of your determination of your ability to preserve that heritage on the battlefields of the South Pacific, on ships at sea, and at far-flung stations throughout the world. You are acquitting yourselves with true marine distinction. 
You are worthy of every heroic tradition of the Corps. I am proud of you. Your people at home are proud of you. You have every reason to be proud of yourselves. As we mark the turn into a new year of Marine Corps history, America says to you, we pledge you the very best guns and planes and tanks in the world for the very best fighters in the world. And we in the Marine Corps reply to those at home, we are grateful for the honor you have attached to our name. We know that the spirit of fighting men is fed by the spirit of people behind them. We know that the United States of America stands staunchly behind us, 130 million strong. We Marines pledge to America that we shall carry on the fight with unrelenting vigor. We promise that hereafter the enemy will be permitted no rest between rounds. We assure the nation that what is past is simply a prelude. We have just begun to fight. We shall never stop until we have smashed the enemy for all time. This is our birthday pledge with confidence that the entire nation will keep the faith with us that we may thereby keep our pledge to it. We are determined to perpetuate the American heritage of victory.